Okay, hi everybody. Uh, my name is Yael Benbenisti, I'm the CEO of Mediterranean Towers Ventures. Uh, I also represent Aging 2.0 in Israel, which is an international organization dealing with technologies and aging well. And I'm a board member of the Israel Gerontology Association. Just a few words about Mediterranean Towers Ventures. We are um, the first Israeli company that invests in technologies for aging well. We are part of Mediterranean Towers Group, which is a publicly traded company operating in Israel, in the, operating independent living facilities, nursing home, and a senior members club. Uh, we, of course, all our portfolio companies have access to Mediterranean Towers 30 years of experience. We run what we call in-residence program that gives entrepreneurs the opportunity to present their product or their service with our residents and staff. We run what we call Reverse Innovation Hub, meaning that our residents will give feedback to the companies about their product, not just the companies that bring the product into the, the residents. And we are part of the ARP Investor Collective, which ARP is the American Association of Retirement People. So we all know this slide uh, about the parameters that influence lifespan and healthy lifespan. But I think that we cannot research only each part of this uh, diagram by itself. The goal is to extend the number of healthy years, but the inter and not only the interaction between these factors is impo important, but also the contribution of each factor to the process. We, in our fund, our goal is to promote home-use non-invasive technologies that will allow us to collect data and cross it with the other elements from the previous slide. We will collect data and we will create rules. When we create these rules, we can move to, be, to become a predict, prediction, to become prediction medicine. Only when we will have these rules, we can move forward to prevention, meaning creating rules for specific groups. I gave here a few examples of, technology, of Israeli technologies for aging well. The first one here is Vayar. Vayar is a sensor that will monitor your one's behavior in his home. The second one is Vital Alerta, which will monitor one's uh, physical parameters. The third one is Medisafe. Medisafe is a company that will monitor um, Med medication management, and the last one that I will elaborate a little bit more is called Olive Diagnostics. Olive Diagnostics will monitor and diagnose your urine. So, we talked about predictive medicine, but I think that the next step will be talking about proactive medicine, and I want to emphasize the difference between the two. Prevention medicine is focused on identifying and minimizing risk factors of diseases before they occur. For example, if we take vaccination, if we do regular health screening, if we adopt life, lifestyle modification like starting exercising or avoiding smoking or using alcohol. But when we move forward, um, actually going one step backward because proactive medicine will be focused on identifying potential health issues and taking actions to address them before they will become more serious, before they will become risk factors. For example, doing some genetic testing and doing more personalized healthcare plans, creating personal rules to the risk factor that we talked before. And now I would like to give you three examples of Israeli companies. The first one will be all of the diagnostics that I took before, that will analyze your urine. Olive is the world's first truly passive home-based urinary diagnostic solution. It can early detect a wide range of health problems and diseases before symptoms appear, including urinary tract infections, kidney stones, bladder infection, heart failure, dehydration and constipation. It works by combining cutting-edge optics with AI technology, big data analysis and AI-driven recommendations that optimize personal health care. Most of us only get our urine or blood tested when we're not feeling well. And in that case, it's already too late. But continuous monitoring is key for early disease detection. 
before we become symptomatic. Olive KG is the only 100% passive continuous monitoring system. Checking a person's urine between five to seven times a day. This provides a granular profile and a strong benchmark, which easily flags indicators for both general health and early disease detection. On it enables both early detection and intervention, leading to improved quality of life, better outcomes, and lower treatment costs. The KG is comprised of two main components, a lead array at the front of the toilet and an array of photodiode detectors at the back. When the light from the lead hits the particular molecule in the urine stream, its energy changes, enabling detection. The KG works regardless of whether or not the bathroom light is on and uses the urine fingerprint to differentiate between users. Changes to a user's profile are flagged and analyzed by caregivers. The device itself is sold for a one-time flat fee, but the main income generator is the derived data. This is collected and provided to the user continuously for a monthly fee. KG can also be integrated with any urinary diagnostics application to provide general health information and detect diseases. When drug companies are developing new drugs, they have a huge problem assessing whether patients are really taking those drugs while they are on a clinical trial. They have to go to the patients, draw blood, try to guess whether the patients are really compliant, and it costs a lot of money and takes a lot of time. All this technology is really solving this issue and creates a new moral for clinical trials assessing drugs. Our intention is to place on in every toilet in the world. Don't miss out on this unique opportunity. Okay. Second company is about heart disease. Nearly half of all adults in the U.S. suffer from hypertension, with many taking medication for their hypertension. Hypertension is associated with greater risk for heart disease and stroke, which are the leading causes of death in the U.S. Blood pressure naturally rises and falls throughout the day, and a single reading during a doctor's visit may not give a clear picture of a patient's health status. In a clinical trial to assess the effectiveness of a medication designed to lower blood pressure, Blood pressure readings are taken at most once a day, and many times less often. The BioBeat wrist monitor is more like a watch and captures 12 real-time cardiopulmonary vital signs, including continuous blood pressure, oxygen saturation, respiratory rate, and pulse rate. In a clinical trial, the wrist monitor can continuously record blood pressure while the patient is conducting their usual activities. This means that a patient's natural variation in blood pressure will be recorded, plus any extreme highs or lows generally missed with occasional readings. This enables a metadata sensor cloud clinical trial to collect continuous blood pressure data from anywhere, resulting in significantly more data on the patient's health and improved understanding of the effects of the medication being investigated in the clinical trial. The BioBeat risk monitor data is tightly integrated with metadata sensor cloud, a powerful data ingestion engine that supports continuous patient data collection from a growing array of medical grade sensors. This innovation will improve patient experience and simplify clinical trial data collection and analysis. Sensor Cloud ingests both raw data as well as metrics directly from the device provider. This data is stored in its native form and is transformed to a common model used for a wide variety of analytics and visualizations. Metadata can combine objective sensor data with a patient's clinical and subjective self-reported observations for a true representation of the patient's real-world experience and quality of life. Metadata's approach is the first of its kind and is uniquely positioned to help develop greater clinical insights that can deliver new therapies. Sensor Cloud presents an innovative opportunity to virtualize clinical trials and digitize the human body as a step towards our long-term vision of a digital twin in healthcare. Now, BioBit has a watch, but they also have a disposable patch, so it's very convenient. The third company, of course, an Israel company, is more about the psychological parameters, because, because we cannot separate the psychological parameters from the physical parameters. The two companies that I, that I mentioned before, 
connecting physiological parameters. Ali Q is a robot, but it's a proactive robot with artificial intelligence, of course, that uses body language, it moves its head uh, and it has lights. It offers tips and advice, it responds to questions and is surprised with suggestions. I will not uh, show you a video because it's a little bit too long, but if you want to promote healthy lifestyle, then this is one of the solutions. Now, my last slide will be a little bit about the barriers, because if it's so good and there are a lot of companies that are doing HTEC uh, solutions, then why we are not adopting those solutions? From the health provider, from the physician point of view, there is a problem of trusting artificial intelligence. We must trust AI, and still I think we don't have enough data and enough research that will give us the sense of, 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 um, of, of uh, strength in, in the system. The second barrier is about, and the same thing is about the customer, uh, we are not trusting AI. The second barrier is about have, that we have no tolerance to mistakes, to computer mistakes. Let's take, for example, an autonomous car. If the car will do a mistake, we will have no tolerance to, the, to this mistake. The same thing will be happening if the machine that should, be, should diagnose us will do a mistake. We have no tolerance for mistakes. Another barrier is about the UX and UI. There, are, there is too much data in, in the interface of those services or um, devices. You need to put just a few minor data that is very clear to the, to the physician and is very clear to the customer. They don't need to know what's happening behind the scene. They need to be, it needs to be very, very clear and very simple. Another barrier is the price. It's still very, very expensive. When we are talking about solution for the customer, we must think that this is not only the price of the product or the service, it's also the, the price of the internet and the internet is still very expensive in some countries. For the physician, there is the question about collecting physiological or psychological parameters or both and how we collect both of them. For the customer, there is the issue of sharing your data, although adults are a little bit afraid of sharing their data, so we, not, we must protect the data and be transparent about what we are going to do with it. And still the design is stigmatizing and uh, they don't want to buy most of the products, so we must think about doing things that are more desirable. Thank you.